you, you know, you can hear the music, you can hear the melody, and you can just sort of play within that. Uh, uh, yes and no. I mean, there, there's a... You don't, you don't need to know how to sight read to be able to play music and at any level. Some of the greatest musicians didn't know how to sight read. But yeah. it helps a lot if you're trying to compose because for, for, for a few reasons. If we, if we do these lessons mainly on composition and theory, it's going to be referencing the entire classical repertoire of music that has been created since in, in the Western Hemisphere. So starting with Gregorian chant all the way to, through the, um, the modernist movement and postmodern. Uh, and yeah. it, it's all documented as sheet music. So you can listen to it as well, but when you can see it on paper, it's frozen in time. So you can look at like bar 23 and see where he's using the flat six with the dominant seven as a deceptive cadence instead of going to the one from the five when the melody mm. goes to the one. And mm. you, you can hear that too, but if you're able to read the music, you can look at the sheet yeah. music and understand it in a more concrete and lasting way and then study yeah. it and compare that to other things. And then also if you can read music, you can compose and write for other people to play, which, mm. which broadens your capabilities for more than just the piano. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, the other thing to mention is um, this may be one-off lesson uh, in the sense that I, well, I couldn't, as much as I would like to sort of carry on and top things up and do something relatively regularly, I couldn't afford that right now. Mm -hmm. So, well, so I've got the videos was... too. I can reference you to videos. I've done a lot of like yeah, yeah, theory-based sure. things yeah. in different videos. Yeah. So yeah, no, that, that's great, and I've you know I've watched quite a lot of your videos, and they're really helpful. So, but so so um, with, with composition in mind, at least as a last part of it, and the other part is you know is just the the whole jazz aspect as a as a genre on one side, mm -hmm. um, and um, really, what I want to get what, what I want to hear from you or understand from you is the stage you, you're at now in your understanding of music. Um, in a physical sense, playing mm -hmm. the visualization of the piano, the way you see it is is different to how I see it, to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, in the sense that you know, if I played um, an extended chord, mm -hmm. you, um, I would see a series of notes, and and very kind of mythologic, um, uh, very sort of slowly, I could figure out what exactly I was playing, what key I was in without sort of a ninth, eleventh, etc., mm -hmm. and break that down. But you would you would do that a lot quicker. Um, and part of that, I assume, is is just just practice basically and going through the the stages. So I I've obviously watched your videos and I see you know you've done, you did that video on kind of stages to go through and things to learn and I've seen that. But if you were if you were going back to the beginning when you started doing all of that. What, and you kind of imagine you visualize the piano slightly differently, and you visualize the things slightly differently. Mm -hmm. What 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 made the what made the difference to you? Like, is it just a case of if you learn every key, uh, every scale, and you learn all inversions, and you just repeat that over and over again, it becomes kind of second nature, natural. And and then when you stick your fingers down and play something, you're kind of like, okay, I just know that that's this particular chord inverted in, you know, this inversion. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, it, it does. And I'm trying to think of the, the most clear way to answer it because it's a deep question. You're, you're, what you're asking, yeah. and let me, because I'm going to be using the piano to answer this question, so I'm yeah. angling it right. Um, what you're asking is essentially if you start from, like, what, what, what's the difference between, what, what, you want me to explain the grayscale that happens between a very basic understanding of just what the piano is and, and what it does. Like it makes these notes and it sounds like this, it sounds like this, sounds like this. Um, and uh, it's so, oh, shoot, my phone should be on airplane mode right now. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, hopefully I don't get any crazy text messages. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, 
But so, so a basic understanding of, of the different from that to when I look at the piano now and I have all of the knowledge that I've acquired over my like I mean let's just say yeah. 29 years of playing piano because I started when I was three um, yeah. what does it look like to me and how does it look different and how do you how can you get closer to that level of understanding yeah there's, there's obviously the steps, but like, what what made the biggest difference? What was it a case of like, after years of practice of, of playing scales over and over again and playing the modes and kind of separating those? Because you know, I've, I've been like playing seventh chords, and the more you play it, the more it kind of becomes instinctive. Not only do your fingers just go where you want them to go, mm -hmm. but you also just kind of see it. Like, in you start to see it, and you go, I, I can see that's a D seven. Like, it just looks like a D7, it's a shape, and it becomes familiar. Like, mm -hmm. like rather than seeing a lot of branches in a tree, now you see a tree kind of thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. And kind of what, yeah. So so, so was there kind of like a pivotal moment where it, it all kind of fit together? Like, so inversions are something which, you know, if you invert something like four times, it's kind of become something else. So d is there a real cutoff? Do you... Can can you really see that, or do you still kind of think, oh, hang on, what am I playing here? Yeah, no, you, 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 yeah, that's a very good question. What you're talking about is something that you can, that can be exemplified if you look at the compositions of Bartok. He's a composer. From the beginning okay. of his career to the end of his career, he, yeah. he was one of the founders of the atonal movement. Um, and you saw his music get from purely tonal and relatively basic, like romantic sounding, to yeah. completely atonal, where he abandoned atonality. But at some, uh, and, and what you're speaking of is an understanding of tonality on the piano to its greatest degree, where eventually it destroys itself. But yeah. you, you, yeah. don't, you don't, uh, and the reason I say destroys itself is because, for example, if you are playing a, like, so you, you, you have a major triad, right? That's pretty obvious. Sorry, this stupid headset. Uh -huh. I've got to figure out how to do these. Um, it, so, yeah, okay, you have a major triad here. That's yeah. one, three, and five in C. Or let's just start from a note, a single note. You have a C, right? That, that C has no context. It could be anything. It could be atonal. It doesn't have to have a tonal center. It's just a note. You add oh, another. Sure. You add another note to it, and you have a fifth, right? This is what yeah. happened in the with Gregorian chant in church music. They started doing unison lines, and coming back to the one. Eventually, mm -hmm. they started adding other notes. They added here. I'll do it down here. So they added a fifth. To it and it was still relatively atonal it wasn't going to a tonal center it was just a sound yeah. it was like a note center rather than a harmonic center at that point yeah um but then when they added the third it's what well, what actually happened is those fifths historically got stacked and then it keeps going up if I had a real piano I could show you until if you compress all of yeah. those fifths down to one scale it becomes the, the yeah. it becomes the chromatic scale uh, yeah. um, because you have your, your G you have your D you bring that down you have your A you bring that down you have your E you bring that down you have your B you bring that down and then you, you so on and so forth from there, um, mm -hmm. which actually becomes this first, which is the, the this is more natural than the than the major scale to the human ear to have the sharp four, but in Western music we have the flat four because that provides a tonal yeah. center. So you have your I, I won't go into there's a lot of complicated stuff that is on the periphery of that yeah. explanation, but that is basically to say you now you have your major scale, which you, the basis of it, your major triad, you add the third in there. Mm -hmm. Now you start talking about relativity. So you have your, yeah. the, 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 this sounds just like a nice major scale, like a major triad, right? You can hear that all right through Skype? Okay, so 
Now what happens when you add the six to it? It's pretty and it sounds like a major six, right? But yeah. you bring the six down and now it's an inverted major six chord, but it's also an A minor chord. It actually sounds yeah. to the ear more like an A minor chord. Yeah. So this can be treated like a C major six chord or an A minor seven chord. Uh -huh. And that provides your first pivotal point of interest in, in composition because when you're composing a piece of music, you're telling a story. And, the and that story has steps and it has questions and answers. It has diversions and conclusions. And if you yeah. listen to the most basic music, which in, at this point in history is pop music, the, one of the things that makes it interesting is when you have a resolution in one aspect of the composition, but a diversion in another aspect of the composition. You'll hear tons of songs, particularly pop songs, that are good, that go that resolve melodically to the one, but then resolve harmonically to the minor six. Okay. That's a, that's a very basic point of interest to the human ear mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you can see in applications at this point in history, right? So, yeah. like, a, the, a, a, an example, like, if you're doing... Right, that's question. And then the end is either very basic, zero interest, or slightly less than basic here, because the the harm, yeah. the harm the melody is resolved to the one, and the harmony is resolved to the minor six. Now you okay. you that that's like level one that that music at this point in history is if you look at classical music which is much more deep you could be yeah. like and and i'm 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 not playing things that sound good right now i'm just playing them for explanation purposes yeah sure. like you you do that same progression same stupid melody That's a diversion that you won't find in pop music, that you will find in tons of classical music. I went to, I then, so I took relativity, I jumped a few steps forward because we don't have a ton of time in this lesson, but I took rel the, re the relativity of what you're hearing and played the same melody note that your ear expected, but I played a chord that has several layers of diversion from the one. The A minor is one layer of diversion from the one. It's the same notes, same scale, it's just starting on a different root, right? The flat six is a different scale. This is, it's essentially the relative, it's, it's the minor scale based on the same root because, now tell me if this doesn't make sense, by the way. Tell me if I'm going too far. Uh, keep going, yeah, keep going. So, so, so you flatted the three, you flatted the six, and you flatted the seven, and now you have your flat six triad, and your melody note still fits because you still have the same note here, which is the one if you're looking at your tonic. When I say tonic, yeah. that's the first chord, the C major. Yeah, sure. But it's the major three if you're looking at the flat six as the root. You have one, two, three, right? Do you know all your major scales? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm understanding everything you're saying. Okay, great. Yeah. So that provides a point of interest. And if I were to make, like, if I were to make it try to sound more pretty, I have a little sustain pedal attached, so I'm going to try to do that, but it's really weird in this setup. Like... So if you can 
like uh, all uh, all I'm doing is centering around the one as my melodic goal note, but I'm and I'm doing a basic chord progression like one minor two minor three six uh, dominant well it's actually six with the um, sharp nine and the sharp five if you can see yeah uh, and I'll send you this video by the way I'm recording it um, yeah so you yeah, can I'll actually see and then two to five, which normally resolves to the one, but instead of going to the one, you go to the flat, the, the flat six, and then you can make that a flat six sus chord, stay on that scale, and then make that a flat six dominant seven with the flat nine, and then your root becomes the flat two. And you see this in jazz compositions all the time. Like Blue Bossa. Yeah. Do you know Blue Bossa? No, I don't know. Um, it's, uh, it, 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 like, it's a jazz standard. I'm writing, I'm writing stuff down, so I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll, I'll check it. Check okay. It out. But, uh, so I'll, I'll just show you. This is the melody. To, uh, it's minor, so then minor four. Two. back to the one. Now it diverges. Right? That takes you away from the center. It takes you away from the tonic. And that's a compositional element because composition is about telling a story. Now it's at the part of the story where it's farther from the root than, um, than it has been at any other point in the story. But then you have to resolve it. And it resolves it by having its goal note be here, which is a half step away from the final goal note, which is here. And a half step away melodically is very is a much, much closer than a half step away harmonically. Because when you're a half step away harmonically, like this is your major mit one, the major two, I mean, sorry, the, this is your major one, this is your major flat two. They're at opposite sides of the circle of fifths. Do you know about the circle of fifths? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 I've been learning, yeah, so. So harmonically, yeah. this is your one, the next closest is your five, and the next closest is your two, the next closest is your six, because you're going in, in fifths. Melodically, yeah. the ear hears this as just a half step away from this. So you have these, di okay. th these, these different opposing forces that have different types of relativity. That's and, interesting. And yeah. using those different types of relativity is what makes composition incredibly interesting. And that's why Blue Bossa is a jazz standard, why it has stood the test of time, because it goes... It has that as its goal note right here, the flat six, and you have your flat two as your harmony and and so the harmony is way far away from the one but the flat six is right next to your tonic harmony or your to your tonic melody which can be the five but your ear doesn't know that yet it doesn't know that it's going to go to the five and then the, the the harmony goes back to the minor two or the diminished two to, to the five seven with the flat nine back to the one where you landed originally and now your melodic note has gone down a half step which is very close and your ear is like wow that was really close but then your harmony has modulated back to the one which is very far away and these two different ideas have been, have come together from two different directions so that that's what's interesting to the ear so now, okay. w when you have that understanding, you have the entire spectrum of harmony at your fingertips to do composition. Your composition probably consists pretty basic of staying within a, um, staying within one um, harmonic context. Like, mm. like, do you have do you have a piano there? Can you play me anything that you've actually composed? Um, yeah, that I, no, not. <laughs> Not at the moment, because I tried to sort of set it up there, and uh, but no, unfortunately, not okay. at the moment. 
So maybe maybe another time. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I, I understand what you mean. Yeah, I, like I can hear the limitation, and that's a frustration for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, I, you know, I've learned a certain amount of, of, of theory as I've gone on, and things and different and modulating techniques and stuff. But it's still very slow. Um, like, because you know, you have to really think through it, and that isn't a fluid way to compose. Like you kind of want to have it there of just yeah, techniques and ideas and things to, um, to to compose in it, so I can kind of think up ideas and uh, and try and do it. But if you don't really know what's going on, then really you're just pressing notes and hoping you get it so it sounds how you want it to sound. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which is the, the pitfall that most people fall into, because they're looking for yeah. a quick fix. They're looking to take yeah. everything and use it without actually knowing how to use it on a deep level. The, the greatest musicians in history, particularly I know about the jazz ones, but I imagine it's probably similar for the classical ones, they pick a very basic thing, whether it's a certain set of concepts or just one concept at a time, and they internalize it. And they do it very slowly. That's what I do. So if you want... like I, so, there are, two, there are two layers to it. One, you have to understand. You have to know one thing is a point of interest that I can use in my compositions. So, mm-hmm. for example, years ago, like seven or eight years ago, um, I had a lesson with Herbie Hancock. Do you know who he is? Yeah. Great, yeah, 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 great, course, great, yeah. great pianist. And he yeah, showed yeah, me please. one concept in the lesson that I walked away with. And it was something that he actually took from Bartok, which is when you're, um, the, if I, if I can remember the actual concept now, I'm not sure, like, I'll have to, I wrote it, I wrote it in my journal, and I may have to, like, go to revisit exactly what, what it was, but I, I'm pretty sure it had yeah, to do with it, it it had to do with modulating um w- with modulating harmony but using the same melodic note and okay it was it, it was at least very similar to what i just showed you for example like yeah you're you're in you're playing in your your one And instead of modu- instead of landing on the um, instead of landing on the one harmonically, you land on the flat six harmonically. It wasn't exactly that, and in fact, I can look it up and revisit it and, and, and tell you. I think I may have talked about it in a different lesson, but um, but now, and this this could be an example of one concept that you can use. But then you have to spend a lot of time internalizing it, because then. You have your, you can you turn this into a dominant, your flat six, and then you can land on the two, on, on the flat two, sorry. Yeah. Now you're on the flat two and you're far away harmonically. And then if you want to use it again, you can modulate up another half step by doing now, because so, you're in in D flat, now you're on your five, and then you're on your flat six of D flat, which is A, and then you turn that into a sus chord, and now you're in D major, and then to get back home from D major, I mean you could keep doing that concept and keep going up the chromatic scale. Harmonically, or now you're in D major, you can turn that into a D minor, and then, which is the two of your original key, and now you're in the f- and then go to the five, and then back to the one. Yeah. Now you've created a story that uses a technique that tells the ear exactly where it's going and makes no mistakes. Mm-hmm. There are no accidents in it. And mm-hmm. you know that you have modulated up a half step, you've modulated up another half step, and then you turn that key into minor, being the minor two 
of where you of your home base and then go to the five and the one and the ear any ear will have taken that journey with you yeah it, so so that's that has then created an interesting composition because of that okay but but so, you need to do that yeah. you, the, the 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 thing i think that actually answers your question is you need to spend a week on that just that mm. or a month oh yeah yeah or whatever yeah, yeah. just playing that and exploring it and then if you play something that's an accident that you don't like look at it, look at that accident accident and be and and know like why it's an accident where you went wrong mm. if you play an accident that mm. you do like then analyze it and figure out in that yeah. moment why you like it. Yeah. And then that might open your mind to other possibilities and other um other ways of of using harmony because it's a study at that point. I think that I think that's it. I think um I mean, I have to compare. It's difficult. It's difficult, isn't it? But once you, once you get, you know, once you say like learn to drive, it's sometimes difficult to explain to someone how to use a clutch because you just kind of do it naturally and break that down. But I think looking back to to where I was and when I sit at a piano with someone who doesn't know, you know, you like you say I like point to mid to the middle C, and they they can't see it. It's like they can't even see the middle key. Mm -hmm. um, and it just those things become so familiar and obvious. So I, I think. You know, my instinct, and from watching your videos and stuff you're saying, is if I practice, if I practice, te even if I'm just practicing scales and practicing versions, they're the building blocks, and then practicing techniques, modulating techniques, like you're saying, and eventually I see it as building a vocabulary up. Is that is that how you feel? Like yes. when you're playing and you're improvising, you, you feel like you you can almost hear or. Or you might you can remember a certain phrase that you learned from a certain song or a lesson you had and you see that as a building block is that I don't necessarily remember sense? phrases and see those as building blocks but well, yeah not phrases on such but like techniques and things you can kind of see it happening and and, you, and then you start piecing all those different I mean techniques together. A, a lot of when I play it's generally intuitive but I'm more noticing than yeah. looking forward I'm I'm the goal, my, my goal is yeah. being present in that moment and allowing yeah. whatever note or harmony will come to me to come to me and then noticing what that is. So if I put yeah. my hand on a piano and it plays a C, I notice many layers of what that C could mean at any point in time. I know that this C is the flat five of an F sharp. So if I were to play yeah. an F sharp half diminished chord, then that would be the furthest point away from the tonic if the tonic actually were C. And then I could go F sharp to B. Uh, I could I could do like this progression if I wanted to, which is just going around the circle of fifths. Yeah. Um and I know I know that by playing a C, but I also know that it's the major three of A flat. So it could be like an A flat. It could lead to that. Um, yeah. But then so if I play a C and then the next note I play is an F, all of the history of what I have studied comes back intuitively into the like the layers of possibilities that could happen with that. So if I wanted to, yeah. th th then so I know that if I'm playing a one now, it's a pretty tonic chord. But then if I play this, I could play the minor four, and I know that if I stick with the major scale in my melody, I could play the major seven of the minor four and it makes this sound. But you only know that by going one to, ma to minor four, keeping your melody note on the three of the one. This is your melody note here. I'm in major one, and now I'm in minor four with a major seven, and it's that pretty sound. And I've written, written a ton of compositions that have that sort of sound in it, that have that built in. But now, if yeah. you don't know any of it, you have to spend a week going 
and then maybe exploring a little bit and then do it up a half step. And, it, and actually like, if, you're, if you want to train the, your ear and your mind to see that possibility, you have to like really drill it in. Yeah. You know, same with scales. When I do scales still, I mean, you shouldn't spend yeah. all your time on scales, but even every day right now, when I do scales, I do them very slowly. I start yeah. at 40 beats per minute doing quarter notes and do at least one octave yeah. in every key so that my mind can internalize what it sounds what it sounds like and keep it refreshed every day um yeah no absolutely i mean the like i kind of i learned very very quickly in the beginning like quicker than people most surprised and part of part of the reason that is is because i've I weirdly always enjoyed doing the kind of really mechanical stuff like it doesn't bore me to to practice the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm quite kind of happy and willing to to really put the groundwork in, but I'm I'm conscious, and this is why I was keen to have a lesson with you, is that I don't want to s waste time doing something either that's maybe not so important or um, is wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. So like, I, I remember you saying in another lesson, you were talking about um, fingering for um, certain scale, mm -hmm. and. And the way you were doing it was was kind of different to how you see it, even published in books. Um, and you talked about specifically the thing that intrigued me was, um, let me just look here because I've got some notes. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Um, when, so when when you're um, when you're playing in different modes, you're using the same kind of relative major fingering. Mm -hmm. And is that is the purpose of that? Um, for ease of soloing, like, oh, and and also, um, if you're kind of, um, if you're jumping in, you know, you're not playing on, you're not starting, you're not starting a scale or a run or whatever on on the one. If you're, you know, starting on the five, are you starting with, with the finger you would have played, with that fingering? Does that make sense? So yeah, in, yeah. In a C major, if if you were playing an A, you wouldn't start with your thumb, or Ex you would you would start. Yeah. Okay. So so, the answer to that is, there's a there's a perfect way to do it, which is what I explained in the other video. Yeah. The the fingering is and it's perfect because it is the most efficient fingering for doing those scales. When you're yeah. when you're crossing down, you cross with your thumb because there's less distance. Yeah. That there, that it, it it makes more physical sense. You'll be able to do it faster if you just play it like that. So if I start uh, the 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 uh, so the second layer of that is if, if I start if I'm playing a C sharp major scale and I start here and I want to do a run, yes, I'll play it with the exact fingering that I described in the video. However. Okay. Yeah. If I'm pl if I'm in C major if I'm playing a C sharp and I'm just gonna play an F note for a melody, I probably won't play it with my thumb. I'll probably play it with my middle finger, because you don't know where you're gonna go after that. I may yeah, go. Okay. I may play a an E. You know. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm in this, I may I may do that, and then that. But which it's just like what you yeah. play is generally not scales. Yeah, um, of course, yeah. So the 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 reason for doing the scales the way that I describe them is to have it in your fingers and have it ingrained at intuitively yeah. so that you can access the maximum efficiency on from an intuitive point yeah. Yeah. when it is necessary for it to come out. But then when you're playing other Sorry, things I'm on Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, go on. Um, on, on, on. I think on that lesson with the guy, he'd like learn. He'd learn the scales in the way that I, I assume had been written down somewhere. And then you said, "Oh, don't do it that way. Do it this way." Mm -hmm. And is a you because a different way because because it's more efficient, or because if the end goal is to play in a certain way, it it 
it helps in the future. Does that make? Because am, am I right in thinking that the way you you would play a scale of fingering is slightly different to how you would you would find in like an official book, like not just oh uh, they've just picked up the wrong notes and they're playing the wrong way kind of thing. I mean, there are some books I think that that have that fingering in it probably yeah. it, it's but why, why is where's the variation is the variation from style is it jazz to classical that's why there's a variation no the variation what? is just method of thought like if, if, if you don't if you think on the deepest like to the deepest level of efficiency you'll do it in the way that i did in that video and there are probably books that have that but then you know it's easy to like have your method of doing something and have it not be perfect have it not be like quite as efficient as it could be and then have it just be fine because it's not that big of a deal like yeah sure yeah. It, it's it's like if you do your scale like like that it's not going to kill you it'll just make you a little bit slower in the long run yeah when your finger tries to access these notes and naturally goes like like if, if you're going downwards naturally it goes to your fourth finger there so then you have to cross over one more where you're crossing from a white note to a white note. Whereas if you wanted to be at maximum efficiency, you would cross over your thumb there. And then you have more access downwards in a more efficient manner. That, that's, okay. that's the reasoning for it. But it's not that big of a deal if you don't follow that reasoning. Mm. Well, no, that's, okay, that's fair. I wondered whether there was kind of some kind of particular reason you're doing it in that way like if if you're you know playing like in all the different modes maybe there's something like as an average overall this was the most efficient way so you know i don't know but anyway that's yeah i won't get too bogged down in that so that's that's okay well, yeah um, i mean the way that i the way that so i described I it in the video the time greg uh, sorry Sorry, well, I'll just say the the way that I described it in the video is the way that I would recommend practicing it. It like the other, okay. I would that's the that is the mo if you're looking for the most efficient way, that's the most efficient way. The other books are like just slightly less efficient. Yeah. 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 Um, um, it's been that's been that's been running for forty minutes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, okay, I'm I'm, I'm not going to charge you any extra for this. But I want to I want to make sure that you have like some sort of plan moving forward um so yeah. let's just talk very briefly about what you're actually going to do um mm -hmm. so what i would recommend is picking like i mean I, I don't know your compositions but yeah what i would recommend is just pick something very specific to add yeah. to your um I mean, I, I would. There's a there's a video on on music theory. Look at my video. Have you seen my video that explains just music theory in general from a classical perspective? Um, I, I'm not. It doesn't ring a bell. Okay. I've seen a few, but yeah, find, I can easily look back and find find, find, find that video, and learn how to mm -hmm. use the circle of fifths to mm -hmm. diverge from and get back to your home base, but get that okay. in your ear. Yeah. Understand that if yeah. you start on an E chord and you're in C, you can then compose by, you, you can just change anything from major to minor at any point, or major to dominant seven. Like, so E to E dominant to A, to A dominant to D, to D dominant seven, to C, I mean, sorry, to G, to G dominant seven, back to C. You've just gotten from E yeah. to C, in a way that makes sense to the ear. So uh -huh. practice doing that from any given point in the chromatic scale, and then notice how your melody note, always have a melody note in there, and notice how the melody note relates from one key to another. So your melody note in E could be E flat, or D, D sharp rather, but then that melody note can become a D, which is now the dominant seven, of E. And now you can be, it can be A, uh, it, it can be a C sharp, which is the major three of A, and then it can be the same note, which is now the major seven of D, but now can be C, which is the dominant seven of D, and then can be the three of G, 
and now can be the one of the one and get you all the way back to the one by only moving a few half steps when you, while, you're, yeah. while your harmony is modulating all around the circle. So mm -hmm. I would highly recommend making that an exercise. How much time do you yeah. have to spend on piano every day? Um, well, it's, it's, very, it's varied over the years, and I've kind of plateaued in recent years as I just kind of play the same thing. And, you know, I've kind of got better. Um, you play them more fluidly, more expression, etc. cetera. But um, pushing myself to learn new things, I haven't done so much recently. Um, but I could, I mean, it's, di it's difficult. It depends. I'm at, now back at university, so um, I, I can quite happily do two hours a day. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, do at least yeah. a half hour and try to, like, yeah. sort of meditate on it because it's... Like, you, you have to go slowly, and don't get to the point where you're frustrating yourself. Just mm. when, you, when you get frustrated, remember that you don't need to go fast. You can go literally as slow as your mind can process everything that you're playing. Yeah. And, and yeah. spend a half hour a day yeah. just doing what I just uh, showed uh, you. No, no. Sorry, I didn't understand that. Are you there? Oh, right. What'd you say? Um, no, I was saying, I was saying um, that that's never, it's never, that's never been an issue. That's, I've never kind of got frustrated. I have a lot of patience for myself and I'm quite diligent. So, okay. so it's, it's more a case of direction for me um, Great. and what to focus on. Okay, awesome. So focus on that at first. Do your scales every day. Obviously get that yeah. under your belt. And... I would pick, if you're just looking at composition, pick some other concepts. I've got tons of concepts in these videos. You can probably find like 10 different concepts just in that one music theory video that I did. And pick like yeah. a, pick one or two maybe, maybe concepts to focus on, just so you don't get too bored of the one concept doing it the whole time. Yeah. And, yeah. and get those in your brain. It's more in your brain than your fingers when you're composing. And yeah. then once it's in your brain, it will come through your fingers as you're playing, as long as you're doing your technical yeah. exercises. Yeah, that, that's, that sounds good. Yeah. Cool. And then let me yeah. know if you have okay. questions. You can always message me and, and whatnot. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, if you ever want another video, uh, another lesson after you like progress in this and you feel like you're at another plateau, you can give me a ring. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, de I definitely think that that might be the way forward. Like, I would like, I would like to have have more regular lessons, but um, I've never, I've never been one of those people. Like, people learn in different ways, and some people like having lessons because it's motivation for each week. But motivation's never been a problem. So I think, I think, yeah, I might just sort of spend the next six months kind of really getting stuff under. And you know, I'll ask you a question if if something comes up, and then hopefully have another lesson at some point. Cool. Sounds great, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, any other any other pressing questions before we call it a day? Um, no. I mean, no, there the, will undoubtedly be something. But I mean, it, it was more it was more of a kind of general thinking, um, of understanding stuff, and seeing where you were um, in in the way you see things, uh, and try and sort of work towards that in the most efficient way. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So there'll, there'll be there'll be like particular detailed stuff, but but really that's 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 been enough i think for me to kind of move on and focus beautiful yeah, all right dan yeah, well good. thank you this is um, this has been cool thanks yeah. for experimenting with my little like headset thing and oh, no. i'll try to get it worked yeah, out no. i mean it's it, like it was kind of difficult to see no, notes and stuff i can i can hear it so i can you know pick up on most of it and cool but i'll put this online um, too so then uh, you and other people can gain the information from it yeah absolutely yeah that, that'd be great Cool. Um, so, so yeah, send me um, your pay. Is it PayPal you want? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just send you my PayPal email. Yeah, you'd rather that bank transfer. 